This is Robert Murdlachi of the MindShare Learning Report, Canada's Learning and Technology e-magazine, and welcome to this week in Canadian EdTech Special Edition. I'm honored to have join me for a MindShare Learning Moment, Meredith Allen, who is currently serving as soundtrack of our education team uh, and is part of Spotify, where she manages the U.S. Of team of education specialists, and uh, I guess Canada is going to be factoring into this as uh, we also have Benjamin Kelly, who is an award-winning STEM educator who teaches at the Caledonia Regional High School and is part of the Anglophone East School District in New Brunswick, Canada, and uh, is past winner of Canada's uh, Classroom of the Future Challenge, I'm proud to say, and uh, this uh, past uh, January at the FTC Conference, Future of Education Conference, was uh, noted to be uh, their school, uh, top STEM school in North America. Uh, Soundtrap uh, for Education is the popular online recording and editing studio, uh, and uh, they recently extended a free trial given the uh, challenging times that we're facing currently. I had the opportunity to meet them at the FTC. DC Conference, Future of Education Conference. Thank you for joining me both uh, this afternoon. Thank you. It's good to be here. Meredith, uh, how are you doing right now health-wise and how is the, the company adapting to these uh, challenging times that we're facing because of COVID? Yeah, health-wise I'm good. We're kind of hunkering down. Um, me and the girls, we do distance learning, mom's homeschooling and uh, yeah. Work-wise, we've been busier than ever. Uh, the company has decided to make Soundtrap for Education free on an extended trial basis for schools that um, want to try it out and, and sign up this semester. And so that with that comes lots of questions about how to, um, pedagogy, like, you know, they want to implement it into a meaningful way in their classroom. So we've been, um, my team of education specialists have been on numerous web uh, webinars the last couple of weeks teaching teachers and we've seen some amazing growth within that sector and so it's it's busy time but it's been actually a really positive great time for teaching right now thank you for that i was fascinated when i was introduced to the tool and the simplicity of it and the fact that spotify acquired it obviously they saw a lot of potential and uh, Ben, uh, you are a power user of sorts. Yes. And how did you come across it? And what impressed you about uh, the tool? Years ago at Ross A. Netherwood, which is a private school here in New Brunswick, uh, they had a conference with Google. Google came to town and they were going through 25 ed tech resources in 25 minutes. So it's just, it just rapid fire. And then all of a sudden, uh, one of the presenters said, uh, and this is kind of like GarageBand in the cloud. And I, I just stopped and I said, forget everything else I just heard. I need to know more about this software. So I adopted it really, really quickly. I've been singing the praises of Soundtrap for years now, uh, possibly half a decade at this point. So how many and years ago was this that you... This would have been 2016, seen? maybe late 2015. Okay. It would have been basically the dawn of Soundtrap. It was just getting going. Right. And it was... But uh, the neat thing is, is I've always said that Soundtrap and GarageBand are the two biggest players. They're the only ones you can really take seriously in the podcasting and music making industry. And I think this home learning is showing that Soundtrap might actually have the edge now over GarageBand. Because you think about it, it's device agnostic. It works on every device you can, con you can even conceive. And that's what our homes are like. They're not all Apple iPads. So I really right. think we're seeing right now Soundtrap becoming the winner in that GarageBand versus Soundtrap uh, contest well that's that's a great comparison and dis descriptor and it really comes down to you know the simplicity particularly in education uh and the, it's really about the democratization of, of tools uh you know i think of canvas uh is another tool that uh guy kawasaki former apple evangelist who i've interviewed you guys are in good company i yeah also had the opportunity Dr. Seymour Papert was the first uh, uh, podcast they ever did when I was doing my master's in that tech and Pepperdine. So uh, it's amazing. I've been so blessed and honored to, to be in your company here is today. And who knows, uh, you know, the mark that you'll, uh, the indelible mark, you'll both no doubt leave in, in education uh, uh, for a better future. But uh, 
Meredith, perhaps you can talk to me a little bit about um, the inspiration around song, Soundtrap and, and the, the transition into education, what the, that's been like uh, in the vision. Yeah, so the, the company in its infancy stage was in 2012, they decided it was gonna be a music tool for music generally. Uh, I don't think that the co-founders or the founders at the time had any inclination of the uh, education implications that it could serve. And so in 15, right when Ben was, was saying he had found it, Chromebooks were becoming kind of more of the norm in classrooms. And with that came the challenge of what tools to use, especially creative tools. And uh, some librarians hacked Soundtrap, the music tool for podcasting and their maker spaces. And I was actually one of those teachers that hacked it um, and, and started my conversation probably right around the same time as Ben. And, and so then the company started paying attention. Okay, now this is a tool that's just more than just um, a digital audio workstation. This is a, a robust uh, voice amplification tool for kiddos. Like we, we can now serve many different people that we didn't think of. And so they, they embraced it full, full on. I think they started a partnership with Google pretty early. Uh, got, yeah, got to be included in their creative apps bundle with a couple of other really great tools. And so it's been fun because being watching the plane as they build it and being part of the builder of the plane has been has been super exciting and and every time that they they make a decision it's based in best practice and what the users need and want um, for for the tool and so teachers have always been at the at the forefront of developing the tool and and now They've risen to the occasion of, of it being an answer for a lot of classrooms right now with distance learning. Well, uh, it, you know, it's amazing. And, uh, and I hope that some of the ed tech uh, companies tune in uh, when we share this as, uh, you know, it goes to show that your vision, you have to be adaptable um, and, and agile in your business planning because opportunities will emerge unexpectedly huh. right and sometimes you have to make a hard right i've been podcasting for the last 13 years so i i'm i'm you know you're preaching to the converted here but ben tell me why a teacher should use soundtrap in the classroom for their well, students as well um the the way i started was i always let the kids make a class album so i always start with the music i don't go right into podcasts the music hooks them the music teaches them how to use soundtrap um, and they love making class albums, even if they are instrumental uh, tracks. Um, the podcasting, though, it's it's telling them that they get the chance to tell their story to the world, and it's all about storytelling. So when I go out a podcast from now on, it's all a, it's going to be all about storytelling. Tell us your story. Let us know what's going on in your lives. And there's no better time to get our kids on Soundtrap than right now, telling their story uh, from quarantine life to this virus and what the world is like, this would be the ideal time to get every student in the world on Soundtrap recording their stories. Brilliant, uh, very well articulated and uh, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Meredith, um, one of the features that I was really impressed with was the ability to edit words. Yes. And that, that to me just changed my whole mindset around editing and, and the, how difficult it is and and it, again it's the democratization the simplicity of a tool the more simple it is and easy to use mm -hmm. the more successful you'll be in the uh adoption curve exactly and, and it's you know we don't you know teachers aren't assessing kids on how to use a, a digital audio workstation they want to assess the student on how they're comprehending their reading assignment or how they're writing. And so we want to take away all those hard technical things so the kids can just hit the ground running with the creativity uh, versus the, the long onboarding of learning the tool in and out. But yeah, the, what you're speaking on is our transcription feature, which was unrolled almost a year ago now. And what that means now is before people who were audio recording voice had to, I learned a new word, scrub the audio. So like if they didn't like a middle section or they said a the a incorrect word, they had to go in and figure it out where in the playhead it was in the recording and then stop it and then trim it and, and do all of this editing. And so now with our transcription feature, 
you just transcribe the the whole track and then you can just do a quick search of the transcription that is popped up there highlight the words that you don't want say you went on a tangent for three minutes about this that you wanted to take it out and you just highlight it and delete it and it automatically adjusts that audio file and so that that that's now, incredible yeah, yeah it's, it's making it super simple for kids to now create these podcasts at the age of six, seven, eight, nine. That's pretty revolutionary, Ben. You were going to jump in and say something. Well, yeah, it's really neat because you're right. The time it takes to snip a piece of audio out, uh, the kids, especially the younger ones like Meredith, Meredith just mentioned, they're not, they're not going to do that. They're just going to leave it in and it's going to be a less superior uh, product. But the fact that they can hunt down words and snip based on the words that they've said, um, Again, we all run on tangents from time to time on podcasts, and it's nice to be able to go back and say, well, maybe I shouldn't have talked about the NHL playoffs on a COVID uh, podcast, right? So it's, it's nice. That, yeah. That's awesome. So you're telling me I can really refine my one <laughs> song, Rhinestone Cowboy, and, to a T and sound like Glenn Campbell one day? There you go. We have auto-tune. There, auto-tunes there well. is auto-tune. Yeah, there is auto-tune. Yeah. Perfect. I have to discover that. I can't wait to get my free trial. <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh, kudos to you for uh, your leadership in, in the podcasting space. And, and Ben, you're so right. Uh, the storytelling uh, part of our uh, current situation, and, and we were already on that track. I mean, the, the, the stories that will emerge, I, I think it'd be cool to have a contest. Uh, and perhaps you're thinking about that. We have a Schools of the Future Challenge. We would love to integrate Soundtrap within that challenge in some way. Uh, perhaps we can explore that. Uh, we've extended the contest to the end of uh, May, and we are uh, going to open it up. Uh, we're using a, a Flipgrid and, and YouTube and a number of tools to submit um, the, the uh, contest uh, videos uh, and recordings as well. It's, it does need to be, it could be a recording, so that would be, very apropos. And uh, I'm so proud of Ben that he's one of the past winners. And, and you know, the leadership that I see out in New Brunswick, and, and it really is about community and collaboration and, and tools like Soundtrap really help nurture that. And uh, I'm so uh, honored to have had the time this afternoon to connect with you. Any parting thoughts to share? I just, uh, I, I can't wait to see the music and the movie ideas that come out of this uh, time when everyone's stuck at home. I mean, all these artists can't go out and perform, so guess what they're doing? They're sitting home and they're creating the next yeah. 15 albums in their portfolio, and I cannot wait to see the next 10 years of music that come out of these few months. That's so true. Meredith? Yeah, for sure. And, and I was just thinking of um, Tracy Williamson, just south of you in Gorham Schools in Maine, uh, posted on her Twitter page the video the school created using Soundtrap, Zoom, WeVideo, um, and Flipgrid. And the music behind was created with a virtual choir that the kids had done, you know, using Soundtrap in this time that they couldn't be next to each other. And that I think we'll just see more and more of those artifacts of creativity that's popping out uh and and i and i'm actually i'm very excited and positive about where education's headed now it is it's a big it's a big hurdle but we've we've now had an opportunity to step up and and use and harness technology in a really meaningful way so i'm i'm very optimistic with that well said well i'd like to say it's never been a more exciting time to be in education and because of leaders like yourself it's only going to get that much more exciting for kids to be engaged. So with that, thank you again for your time this afternoon, Ben and Meredith. Thank you. It's a pleasure. That was Meredith Allen of Soundtrap and Ben Kelly of the Canada Caledonia High School award-winning educator. My name is Robert Merdlanchi, the Mindshare Learning Report. Be sure to check out Triple W Mindshare Learning to get your latest issue. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep the learning curve steep.